Okay, if we look at the prokaryotic RNA uh, polymerase uh, complex, uh, which is engaged uh, with the DNA for its transcriptional process, uh, it has a large size, and then in that size, there are um, uh, specific, um, I guess, the pockets uh, where it'll interact with the DNA strands, um, I guess, template, uh, I guess, uh, the coding strand and non-coding strand and how those strands will go through the enzyme and then how the uh, transcribed RNA will exit uh, from the enzyme will show up here in this diagram. Um, so um, you don't have to memorize all these, but uh, there are place, uh, there is a place where nucleotides will be taken up, okay, coming in, nucleotide channel, okay, and then where RNA will go out after transcription is done, and then um, non-template uh, DNA strain will stay, while the template strain uh, will also st uh, stay here, so non-template versus template st uh, strain, um, then how they are separated and then they will be used to build RNA, okay? Let's understand that. And then uh, when uh, RNA polymer is moving uh, through the DNA template strain, you know, uh, there are different models explaining that, uh, but, you know, among these uh, things, uh, if you look at this scrunching model, um, so RNA polymerase remains kind of stationary and pulls down the DNA like this, okay? And while it, and that's how it moves uh, towards the, uh, the, the other direction um, to transcribe the gene, okay? So polymerase, RNA polymerase escapes the promoter and enter the elongation phase once it manages to synthesize a transcription uh, about 10 or more nucleotides length. Okay, so once 10 or, or longer nucleotide, uh, the RNA nucleotide is made, and it moves from the promoter sequence area. That's what it means. Okay, and the breaking of all interactions between polymerase and promoter elements and uh, polymerase and regulatory uh, proteins are associated with the pro, uh, promoter escape, in a sense, and only 8 to 9 nucleotides of the growing RNA chain remains base paired with the DNA template at a given time. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 9 nucleotides are engaged in the polymerase at a given time, that's what it means. And during elongation, um, the enzyme adds one nucleotide at a time to growing RNA, and um, that's what it says, okay? So RNA polymerase also does have a couple of uh, proofreading mechanisms uh, try to correct um, its transcription. So one mechanism is called pyro uh, phos phospholytic editing, which means you know if uh, it uh, has uh, a wrong nucleotide accidentally, uh, it can uh, put that back by adding back the pyrophosphate to the um, the nucleotide that was mistakenly added, so that you know. Uh, nucleotide becomes triphosphate and folds up, and it re re uh, does the polymerization after that. And another enzyme, uh, another mechanism called the hydrolytic editing. Uh, so you can backtrack, just like DNA polymerase, and then check if it sees uh, if it added or correcting, and then you know if it's not, it's just kind of cut up the phosphate isobond, then the redo the uh, polymerization. Okay, so understand it does have some probating mechanisms like DNA polymerase. And then RNA polymerase can uh, uh, kind of become stalled or arrest, arrested if uh, th there's uh, some damage on the DNA. We talked about some damages uh, on DNA uh, uh, in the prior chapter when you talk about the mutations, right? So uh, there are enzymes like uh, transcription coupled repair uh, factor en enzyme, the proteins, uh, they can remove uh, the stalled or stopped uh, RNA polymerase because of the DNA damage on the template strand because the RNA polymerase doesn't know what to do with those, right? Then this enzyme comes along and then remove RNA polymerase. And once RNA polymerase is removed and that damaged area uh, will be repaired by the enzymes like this, U UVR, A, B, C, uh, uh, those DNA uh, repair enzymes we talked about uh, in the previous chapter. And then uh, termination of the transcription. Um, that is actually sign uh, signaled or initiated by the RNA uh, sequence. Okay, when it's transcribed, at the end of the RNA, there may be a unique sequence 
um, like that will give you the secondary structure, kind of a hairpin structure uh, that can uh, tell RNA polymerase, oh, it, it is done, so you can dissociate from the DNA template. That's one mechanism. So that's actually the raw depend, uh, independent uh, termination mechanism where the, uh, that uh, sequence uh, uh, is formed and the RNA polymerase recognizes it. Another termination mechanism called raw factor dependent uh, termination mechanism. So raw factor is a protein uh, that binds on a transcript and uses energy uh, from ATP to hydrolyze um, uh, the termination. Okay, so row, row uh, dependent termination mechanism and there's a row independent termination mechanism. So row independent mechanism um, it has that intrinsic terminator, which is this sequence, okay, uh, with about 20 nucleotide long and has a stretch of A and A's and T's, so eight of those, okay. Um, so they can form this helping. So this is how it does it. So, so RNA is transcribed and at the end, that hairpin structure um, will be formed, and then that hairpin structure kind of tells um, RNA polymerase, which is located probably around here, that that's the end of the transcription that, that falls up. Okay. So now uh, let's talk about the transcription mechanism in eukaryotic cells. Okay. So as we said before, uh, there are multiple RNA polymerases in the, uh, in the eukaryotic cells, uh, polymerase one, two, and three. Um, and then and those polymerases would require multiple, multiple general transcription factors. And there are so many of those, okay? So I don't expect you to remember all those uh, transcription factors and what they do and things like that, but just understand the complexity. And, um, and besides those general transcription factors, there are additional uh, transcription factors such as mediator complex and chromatin modifying enzymes because, because uh, chromatin compact structure should be modified for the transcription sh uh, should take place. Uh, yeah, there are so many of those uh, playing important roles. And then RNA polymerase 2 uh, is explained in textbook because that is the main, I guess, so-called main RNA polymerase doing the transcription for uh, messenger RNAs that will be translated. Okay, so uh, if we look at that polymerase, how it works. Okay, uh, of course it recognizes a promoter sequence. It's a, considered core promoter sequence. It's about 40 to 60 nucleotide long. It's shown up there in here in the diagram here. It's got uh, made out of, you know, uh, uh, this uh, 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 transcription factor B uh, uh, recognition element. So B recognition element, that's why I said BRE, okay, uh, part of that, okay, as well as Tara binding uh, protein recognition. So it's Tara because it's a TATA rich sequence. Uh, that's where uh, Tara binding protein <coughs> binds, okay, that's a transcription factor. And then there's an initiator uh, sequence there, okay? And then there's a downstream promoter element, okay? And then um, downstream core element, okay? So why are they considered downstream? Because they are downstream of the start of the transcription side, okay? The uh, transcription is starting right there. Uh, so it's compared to that, it's downstream. Then these will be considered the upstream, okay? So downstream core and downstream, um, Promoter elements there are there. Um, <clears throat> so, the, for the accurate transcription, you know, uh, there are other prom promoter proximal elements uh, located kind of upstream activator sequences, such as enhancer, silencer, boundary elements, and insulators uh, are located farther away from here. So, we'll talk about those later on. Okay? So let's talk about how this RNA polymerase 2 can start the transcription by binding with the promoter sequence. So of course, it's not just a <coughs> polymerase enzyme. There are other general transcription factors that are involved in this process. Okay. <coughs> First of all, uh, Tara element uh, is recognized by transcription factor 2D uh, uh, protein, and which is also having another protein called TBP. TBP is a Tara binding protein. So it's showing up there, TBP Tara binding protein and factor 2D is there and they will bind okay, on that Tara area. So Tara binding protein is binding at, at that area. Once that happens, other factors like uh, factor 2A, 2B, 2F, and polymerase number 2, uh, and then 2E and 2H 
uh, they will also join that complex. Okay, um, there are so many things showing up there. They are joining that complex there, as well as the RNA polymerase. <clears throat> so overall, there are about ten transcription associated factors serve various functions among these. Uh, okay. And then among those, uh, 2B, factor 2B can bridge uh, transcription uh, Tata binding protein and polymerase number 2. Mm, so, so it's this guy, uh, 2B, uh, that can bridge. It's, it's hidden here, that, but it's a green guy here okay, that can bridge Tata binding protein and the polymerase number 2. And then factor 2F is recruited with the polymerase number 2 and stabilize DNA and uh, Tata binding protein and factor 2B uh, complex. So, factor 2F is showing up uh, here. So, that guy we're talking about. So, it can stabilize uh, and then re recruit <coughs> polymer 2 and stabilizes. So, it's showing up here. Okay. And factor 2E right here can recruit factor 2H, these two guys. Uh, they can control ATP dependent transition of pre initiation complex to open complex. So, when they join, so that may be a pre-initiation complex and that can become you know uh, the open uh, complex so see that opening of the dna okay so before it was not open but after they join the dna is opened up okay that transition is shown up there okay made it by these two factors okay and the polymer escape of polymer uh, number uh, polymer number two is kept so escape being the promoter uh, sequence area that requires phosphorylation of the C-terminus of the RNA polymerase uh, uh, region. So we saw that here in this diagram, a lot of uh, P's meaning a lot of phosphates are added to the C-terminus of the RNA polymerase. That's what is shown up there. Okay, that is required for this polymerase to escape from the promoter sequence, meaning uh, the transcription is continued after that. Okay. So there are about seven polypeptides, uh, probably they'll be uh, uh, made up with uh, tyrosine, serine, uh, proline, threonine, serine, proline, serine. Okay, uh, they'll be highly phosphorylated. Uh, these repeats contain size phosphorylation by an enzyme called kinase. Kinase is a specialized enzyme that can phosphorylate its substrate. Okay. And factor 2H and other kinases and phosphatases act on C terminus of polymerase enzymes. Okay? So the phosphorylation of C terminus of RNA uh, polymerase is very important. Okay? So this uh, diagram shows you how the Tata binding uh, protein uh, can unbend uh, the DNA okay? uh, using its beta pleated sheet structure, uh, which can go into the minor group of the DNA. Uh, uh, in the promoter sequence area. So when uh, bind with DNA, Tata binding protein can cause the minor group to widen open, okay? Um, so it can become a flat conformation. So that uh, uh, triggers a bending of DNA about uh, 80 degrees, okay? And then the two pairs of phenylalanine side chains uh, interchelates between the bases. Interchelating means going in between, between the bases. Okay, so that's either end of the you know recursion sequence and drives DNA bend. So DNA is bent around that uh, TATA area because TATA is you know, less rigid because there's only like double hydrogen bonds there. So DNA could be either be bent. So that's in starting of the you know melting of the DNA to uh, two strands. Okay, that's initiated by tata binding protein. Okay? So besides the general transcription factors, uh, additional proteins are involved in the transcription initiation. Uh, some of those additional proteins are, such as activators, okay, which are shown up here, activator proteins. Uh, they are involved in recruiting the polymerase enzyme to promote uh, uh, to the promoter area. So, um, so the activator and the mediator, uh, they are working together to recruit the promoter enzymes. Okay. And then especially the mediator is interacting with the uh, C-terminus of the uh, polymerase enzyme. Um, uh, it can also regulate the C-terminal uh, domain of the kinase enzyme. So, you know, the phosphorylation is kind of uh, regulated by this mediator protein. That's why it's shown up there. And additional proteins like chromatin uh, remodeling proteins are also important because chromatin structure should be remodeled to be more loosened up uh, conditions for the uh, transcription to take place. Okay, understand these proteins.